Okay, let's face it. Creating a messy bundle of wires like this inside Blender can be very time consuming. But today I wanna to share a quick and easy way to get this effect using a free add-on that comes bundled with Blender. I'll also share some tips on how to create a render just like the one that you see here. This is Brandon Hicks and welcome to the Orange Guild. Before we get started with today's tutorial, what we need to do is enable the add-on we're gonna to use to create our bundle of wires. So let's jump on up to the edit menu, down to user preferences. We're gonna to go to the add-ons tab in the middle, and then we need to search for the word extra. When you type that in, you should see an add curve extra objects add-on. So let's check off this box to enable that, and then close the user preferences. Now, if we jump on over to the context menu on the far right-hand side, click on this little arrow, you should see the transform properties open under this tab called item and our add-on is going to be located under this create tab down at the very bottom. So let's click that, and now you should see this spleen generator menu and these three options here. If you've done all that and you can see these options, then you've correctly enabled the right add-on, and now we should be able to proceed with the rest of the tutorial. So to get started, what I'm gonna do here is grab all of the objects in my 3D viewport, and then I'm gonna go up to object and delete. And what I wanna do now is add in another mesh object and I'm gonna use a UV sphere for this. So let's grab a UV sphere and then we can go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit. So we have the sphere in 3D space now and we're gonna use this as our boundary object to help control how our bundle of wires are uh, inserted into the scene. And so we've got three options here. So we'll start with SpiroFit and basically if you click this with a mesh selected, you'll notice that we now have a curve sort of wrapping around the edge of our mesh here. And so to expand these properties, we'll be able to kind of adjust these and dial in our settings. And so what we wanna do is increase the number of spires here, which will allow us to create more spirals around the outside edge. You'll notice if we turn on X-ray, you can kind of see a better example of what this is doing here. Now to actually get the wires to show up, what we need to do is increase the bevel radius a little bit so that we are actually extruding a curve so that it has some physical dimension. So I'm gonna hold shift and then sort of drag this down a little bit to dial this in until we get something like this. So now if we were to select our mesh and go ahead and hit X and delete that, we're left with just the wire that has been created with our spleen generator over here. So in a very basic form, that is how the add extra objects with the curves works. And we have three different options to preview here. So let's go ahead and jump in and look at some examples of what we can do with these different options. So as you can see here, we have several different examples of how each of these three generators work. And so looking across these different layers here, you can see all of the different ways that you can use this. Basically, you have the example I just showed you with the SpiroFit example here wrapping around the edge of a sphere. All of these allow random noise to be added in with the settings. The thing to remember about SpiroFit is that if we look at a primitive object, it's going to wrap around the outside diameter of the object. And then the difference with these other two is that with bounce spleen, instead of wrapping around the outside, you are going to have a primitive object. And once you start projecting, it's going to bounce around inside the middle of the object. So it doesn't matter what shape you use. You can see that we're using a Suzanne monkey head over here on the left for these other examples. So any mesh object will allow you to use these. And then catenary is quite a bit different in that what it allows you to do is select two different meshes. So you can see we have a bunch of tiny spheres here. And what I've done is I've just selected two of these and used the catenary generator over here. And it draws a simple curve between the two meshes. So it's a great thing to do if you want to create wires or rope, uh, things dangling down between two points in 3D space. And so there's an, a variable that you can adjust in the generator that allows you to decide how much this wire droops down or how tight it is spread across these two mesh objects. So those are the three different spleen generators that we're gonna be looking at today. And primarily we're gonna be focusing on this bounce spleen that you see right here. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how I created some of this right here with these bundle of wires. So creating the first bundle of wires is pretty simple. All we're gonna do is select our UV sphere here that we have in the 3D viewport, and then we're gonna use bounce spleen. So we're gonna select that and that's gonna start immediately bouncing around some wires for us in our mesh. Now, what we need to do is focus on the number of bounces, so we can turn this up or down, that's gonna change the number of wires and the number of times it bounces around the inside of our sphere. 
And then from there, we can play with the noise. So if it's not random enough for you, you can turn this up or down. Uh, more uh, extensive values here. We'll see it kind of going outside the mesh a little bit. And so if you want to dial that in a little bit lower to something like 0.15, it'll be a little bit more controlled, but still fairly random. And then extra is kind of important. It's the number of times that the bounce will try to find a face to bounce off of inside the sphere before it moves on to the next number in the sequence. And so it's going to give it 50 tries to line up with a face that it can bounce off of. And if it doesn't hit a face within 50 tries in a random number, it's going to basically just skip it and move on to the next bounce. So you can dial that in if you need to. The main thing you want to do here to see this in the 3D viewport is increase your bevel radius. So I've turned this up to 0 0.003 as you can see here. And then if you are noticing some jagged edges on the edge of your curves here, you're going to want to play with your resolution. So you can turn this up here until you see a nice smooth effect. If you do turn this into 3D geometry, that's going to increase the number of polygons, but it can be quite effective if you're going to see close up wires in your render. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to generating the bundle of wires. The trick here to getting this really nice effect is layering these up. And so what I did was I combined the use of the bounce spleen with the spire fit to create several layers of depth with different bundles of wires. And so what you can do is if you're done with the settings here and you don't need to tweak them anymore, you can just deselect the sphere by clicking off into 3D space. Those options will disappear. And now you won't be able to get those back. But if you still want to tweak things like the thickness of your curves and things that have been generated, all you have to do is select those, move over to your context menu with your curve and then jump down to geometry and you can play with your depth, which is the same number that we just created over here with the thickness for those wires. Okay, let's grab the sphere once again, and I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up a little bit. Let's turn on X-ray so we can see on the inside of that. And if we hide this really quickly, you'll see if we zoom in that we do indeed have several layers of wires on the inside of our mesh here. And so that can be very, very helpful if you want some very dense wires, you can always turn up the bounces to get more of those going on. So without X-ray on, that's how that looks as a shaded piece of geometry. And I think it's looking pretty good. That would take a very long time to generate if you were doing it manually. So this is a great add-on to be using. Okay, so let's unhide our sphere here. Now I've scaled this up quite a bit bigger now, and I'm gonna use a little bit less size there. So I'm gonna scale that down and I'm gonna use Spire Fit now. And what I wanna do is increase the Spire resolution. Let's take this down, not so high, maybe 24. Increase the number of spires. And then I want to use randomize to kind of get a little bit more of a crazy effect on the outside edges here. So this is going to give it a really hairy kind of look on those outside edges. And I want to use the same basic settings I have done here on the spleen for the resolution. So maybe set this up to something like 24. And then for the radius, what are we at? 0 0.002, something like that. So let's turn off x-ray and take a look. And I think we're looking fairly good. So let's go ahead and deselect. And then we go ahead and hide our sphere again so we can see what we're getting. And so if you just continue to layer this up, you'll notice that you have lots of different interesting things happening in 3D space that you can utilize to create some pretty effective illustrations. And so I'm gonna select the bundle of wires on the inside. And one of the tricks I used to kind of add some, some more depth and get things going for the illustration was to just duplicate a linked version of this object in space, rotate it a little bit about out of axis, and then it looks like a completely different bundle from the same angle. Uh, so that will help you kind of get some more randomization happening. So let's select this bundle of wires you can see we have in the middle here. I'm going to use Alt D to create a linked duplicate. And then I'm going to hit S and scale that in a little bit right here, just a little bit inside of where we were to create a bit of another uh, bundle right there. Now what I want to do is just tap R a couple of times and I can randomly rotate this in 3D space so it's off axis from where it was. And then if I were to kind of rotate around now, you'll see we have a completely different look. But the interesting thing about the way we use the link duplicate is that it's not going to add a lot of extra geometry and use it more memory because we're basically just keeping the same mesh, but we're placing it in another place in 3D space. So it's a really nice trick. So let's continue to do that a couple more times. So I'm gonna hit Alt D, S, scale this in, tap R a couple of times and rotate, Alt D, S, scale in, tap R a couple of times and rotate. And you can see just a couple of those and you got so much wire 
generation happening in the middle of your shot that you can't even see through to the other side of your geometry anymore. And so you'll see the, the number of verts, the number of faces increasing, but the memory should stay the same as it was before because we are just basically using the same mesh. You can take this and kind of duplicate some more, take a look at what that's doing, rotate that around. And again, you'll notice the memory barely changes at all when we do this. Okay, so that's how we got the very dense uh, jungle of wires in the middle of our scene. And then I used the outside mesh with the same technique to create different layers to use for the placement of our camera. So we have this feeling like we're kind of moving through the middle of some, some wire layers here. So I'm gonna hit Alt D, S, scale up, tap R a couple of times, and again, we're just gonna randomize this. And so again, you can see it's very effortless in terms of how we're creating this scene, but with all of these different layers now in effect, it's very easy to make it feel like there's a lot of complicated things going on, like it took you days to create this, and so it's very, very cool. So let's go ahead and add in a camera object, and it's gonna put that in our scene. You can see it's in the middle right there, that's okay. And then what I wanna do is, let's go ahead and grab our move widget, and we can move our camera to the outside over here somewhere, and kinda of get that to where it's pointed towards our big ball of wires right here. If we hit zero on the numpad, that's gonna put us in the middle of camera view. And now what we wanna do is we wanna move ourselves further inside the middle of our wires here. And so to see what I'm doing outside of camera perspective, I'm gonna go ahead and split my window by dragging over with this little crosshair right here. And then I can just kind of middle click and rotate around to where I'm back in 3D space. And now what I wanna do is grab this and I can push my camera in through these bundles of wires and it's very hard to see from the camera's perspective where I am at and what I'm doing, but you can see with the other viewport up, I can very quickly find where I'm at and then just kind of move myself into place. So what you can do is kind of position yourself where you think you've got a good vantage point on the middle bundle of wires that's very, very dense, and then take your outside bundle and just start scaling up as you see here. And what you wanna do is you wanna pass the point where your camera is in 3D space. So I can select the camera again, just to see where that's at. So I'm way over here. And we wanna start creating varying levels of depth and distance. And so I'm just basically going to be scaling and moving the camera till I find something that kind of looks interesting. So while I'm looking through the camera in this viewport, if I hit G, I can start moving the camera around until I find something that's kind of interesting to look at. Something that can help when you have a really complicated scene like this is to turn on the option here in the viewport shading tab. And we can use random under color and that will make it a little easier to see what's happening here. So let's do that. And now I'm just gonna start moving this around. I can choose rotate and kind of rotate the camera. And this is basically all I did to start creating this illustration. Okay, so now that you've seen how to create a bundle of wires and how to start layering things up, let's take a look at the final illustration and let me show you some things about how this was put together and how to create your own bundle of wires illustration for your scenes. Okay, so what you'll see here in my final scene is that I have everything organized over here in my scene collection into different sub collections. So I'm just gonna start turning things on one by one and kind of describe what is happening with the way this is laid out in this scene. So we'll start with the backdrop. Basically, I created this very simple plane and then I just added some interesting gradient textures in the outliner over here for the nodes to create a little gradient starting in the center of my focal point and moving out to this uh, uh, edge over here, which is sort of a, a white to an orange color. And so it's important to note this is offset a little bit because my focal point is sort of hovering right around this point in the image. If we keep layering things up on top, you'll see if I turn on Suzanne, this is where the end of the uh, focal point is gonna end up in the image. And so you can see that the gradient sort of corresponds to where uh, this is located. So I'm gonna turn this back off for now. And then let me just kind of show you how things are laid out. So I used a very simple uh, lighting setup. You can see my camera is located right here. And then I have just a couple of spotlights at opposite sides here basically at a 45 degree angle pointing down onto the scene. And then I have one big point light in the middle that kind of adds some illumination in the center of the wires. So for now, let me turn this back off and just show you how things are layered up as we go. So we'll start with the distant wires. If I turn this on, you'll see that basically 
This is just a giant uh, outside bundle of wires uh, using the spiro fit that we talked about. So we're not bouncing in the middle, we're keeping this on the outside edge. And if I select this, you can see the material is just a basic principle BSDF with an orange base color to kind of blend this in with the backdrop that we created. With the lights on, you can kind of see how this is reacting. We've got a little bit of highlighting and shadowing happening on these distant wires. And that's just enough to kind of uh, give it some dimensionality there. But basically our camera is on the inside of this uh, large diameter of wires. So these are just the distant wires that we're using. Inside of that, you'll have the uh, Suzanne placed sort of right here in the lower left-hand corner. I find it's really important not to center things directly usually. What I wanna do is offset things. So here it's a little bit to the left in camera frame. And you'll see that I created a fairly interesting uh, material here for the monkey head. So it's sort of a stone, a smooth stone type of material. And I layered up a lot of different nodes to get an interesting texture effect on this. All of it's procedural, no image maps, uh, no UVs, no anything complicated, just a lot of nodes. So uh, fairly straightforward if you know how to use the nodes. And so that's how that works. Moving on, let's talk about how things are layered inside of that. So we have the electrical wire that is sort of placed around the focal point and spirals up towards the camera. If I were to just take the uh, distant wires and turn those off and zoom in here in the 3D viewport, you can kind of see how these are spiraling up towards the camera. And what this does is it creates a really nice separation from the middle ground to the foreground and gives us a lot of depth and uh, interesting things happening around the focal point. So I like this because it leads the eye in towards the middle, spiraling down into where we want the eye to focus. So we'll turn the distant wires back on. You can see the effect combined a little bit. And then to tie everything together, of course, we have our main bundle of wires that we spent a long time getting in place. So with this turned on, you'll see that there's quite a bit more going on in the scene. But basically all we've done here is started to use the bounce uh, wires to get things going on on the interior of these spheres, just like you saw in the tutorial. And all I did was spend a lot of time sort of carefully layering things in and lining things up correctly in the viewport. What you'll notice is I used a lot of uh, different effects to try to get separation in the image. We've got varying colors, uh, sort of in the warmer tones with the reds and the, the oranges and the yellows. But basically, I wanted to create a little bit of separation with the color of uh, the Suzanne texture for this sort of stone material. And then you'll notice this big spiral wire is sort of a darker material, uh, just like this is. All of that kind of leads your eye in and gives some visual interest in separating things in the image. And so that's very, very interesting uh, to kind of break things up that way. You'll also notice that I have depth of field turned on for the camera so that as things get closer to the camera, they're blurred out a little more further away from the focal point here. They're also blurring a little bit. Any tool that you can use to give yourself a little bit more visual separation will really increase the uh, visual appeal for the image. Take your time, layer things in, and do what you can to get some interesting effects, and then share those in the comments if you've got some interesting things you've done with your bundle of wires. With everything turned on, you can kind of see how the, uh, the scene is laid out here. That is what I did to create my bundle of wires 3D illustration. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in seeing more Blender tutorials, then you can lend your support by purchasing a download of today's tutorial, which includes a high-res video download and all the project files you've seen today. Thanks for making the Orange Guild a part of your day, and I'll see you next time.